This SciShow video is supported by Linode. You can get a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account at linode.com slash scishow. Picture fish transitioning to life on land to eventually become four-footed vertebrates. And ask yourself, what adaptation do they need to do that? Are you thinking of legs? I'm thinking of legs. But land critters aren't just special as walkers, they're also special as blinkers. Because yeah, newsflash, fish don't blink, unlike all major groups of tetrapods, the four-legged vertebrates which do blink. So scientists have set out to determine why blinking evolved, and whether it was directly related to our move to land. And they did this by studying adorable amphibious fish called mudskippers. The benefits of blinking range from protecting yourself from an incoming poke to keeping things moist. And you'd think that it would be helpful to blink underwater, too, since moisture isn't a problem there, but getting poked definitely is. But fish live without ever blinking. Even the closest relatives of tetrapods don't blink, and that's a hint that moving to land was likely a major factor. After all, virtually all land vertebrates do it, from salamanders to turtles to us. We don't all blink the same way, though. We humans blink by lowering our upper eyelids, while ducks blink by raising their lower lids. Plus, we don't even all have the same number of eyelids. Now, we also unfortunately don't have a ton of blinking-related fossil evidence, so it's tough to draw conclusions about when and how this widespread adaptation evolved. To figure out the likely origins of blinking, researchers stared into the eyes of mudskippers, a little fish that weirdly spends a lot of time on land. And these charming amphibious fishes blink, but not the way we do. Mudskippers basically bloop their eyes down into their heads, while a membrane simultaneously sweeps upward. The authors of the study, published in April 2023 in the journal PNAS, proposed that blinking and mudskippers might do one of three main things. Moisten the eyes, clean away debris, or protect them against injury. Now, protection makes a lot of sense, because look at these guys. They're beady little eyes stick way up to peek out of the water, much like early tetrapods. Now, several other groups of fishes can retract their eyes, too, so this blinking-adjacent adaptation could point to its evolution as protection from injury. Yet we don't see eye retraction in gobies, the closest relatives of mudskippers. And even mudskippers forego blinking while underwater, unless they straight-up bump their noggin. So while it does seem to help protect their eyes, we have to conclude that protection isn't the number one reason for blinking. In the end, this study showed that mudskipper blinking served all the same functions as in tetrapods. Not only do they blink to avoid potential injury, a single blink clears their eyes of essentially all fine debris. Also, they blink to keep their eyes moist, likely spreading mucus secretions from their head over their eyes, since they don't have tear glands. And if conditions get too dry, they adorably roll around in the water to spread it over their eyes. Not only does it appear the evolution of mudskipper blinking is directly tied to life on land, but one function didn't appear more important than the others when it came to blinking benefits. And all signs point to our ancient relatives evolving the blink as part of their quest to become terrestrial, much like it did in mudskippers, even though they evolved separately. This kind of convergent evolution makes it seem like you have to blink to adapt to life on land, at least the way vertebrate eyes work. Might not be as flashy as legs, but this tetrapod is very glad to have eyelids. And I'm very sorry if your eyes are all itchy now. This side this video is supported by Linode, a cloud computing company from Akamai that keeps some of the best stuff on the internet running with data centers all across the world. Because one of the best things about the internet is that it is the World Wide Web. You can access it from all over the place. The Akamai Global Network reaches over 4,100 locations and 135 countries, so odds are good that they've got a site that can work for you no matter how remote you may be. And by the end of 2023, they're going to be adding even more sites to get you better service across the world. At SciShow, we're all about making stuff accessible. And Linode is right there with us. You can get going with those brand new servers by clicking the link in the description down below, or by heading to linode.com slash scishow for a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. And thanks for watching from all over the world.